Griselda, one of the most talented and underrated music groups out there right now. Their gritty but artsy music style, high fashion sense, and intricate street rhymes has been garnering a lot of attention throughout the years. The group, along with their label, went from starting out being a clothing brand to being an independent record label to receiving praise from hip hop legends such as Raekwon, Jay-Z, Eminem, and many more. As a group, they are insane, but as solo artists, they all be getting plenty busy too. I first found out about the group in 2016 when I heard the song Dully Boys off of West Side Gun's debut album because I saw that it had Action Bronson on it, which I have a video about. <clears throat> the link is in the description. Um, <clears throat> but that song is just fire. The verses were insane and that beat is just crazy. Go check it out. And after I heard that, I listened to the whole album and man, I was just impressed. Later on though, I would go out and I would find Benny and Conway, but I'll get more into them later. These guys really beat the odds though, man. First, it was challenging getting out of Buffalo, New York in itself. I mean, in 2016, Buffalo ranked 15th in violent crime rate in the nation. And Buffalo isn't like a super duper big city. Buffalo has a population of just over 250,000 people. All of them had to grow up in that environment. Instead of in the 2000s, they had to grow up throughout the 80s and the 90s. Also, no artist besides Rick James, the almighty Rick James, has really came out of Buffalo like that, especially in rap. Griselda didn't really have a blueprint and had to build their own movement. The group's members all were doing stints in prison for different crimes and such when they were just beginning too. One of the members, Conway the Machine, might have not been here today at all due to him getting shot in the head in 2012. Make sure to check me out the game. It's not no. Three shots couldn't drop me. I took it a smile. You know what I mean? Got hit twice in the neck. Graze in the head. You know, just what it is. All of these things and some more things could have put it into Griselda before it even really began to start. This is a story that inspired me to make this. Before I get more into the video though, I would just like to say that I appreciate you guys for being here and watching this because you guys can be doing a million other things right now. But instead, you're here with me and I thank you for that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. I reply to pretty much all of the comments and I love going through them and seeing what you guys think. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can DM me some video ideas, maybe some serious concepts, or we can just talk music. It's all love. Without further ado, I give you Griselda, Beating the Odds documentary. The name of Griselda is inspired by the infamous Colombian drug lord, Griselda Blanco, who was a central figure in the violent drug wars in Miami in the 1970s and the 1980s. One of her many nicknames is the Queen of Cocaine. Before I get into the group as a whole, I kind of have to give a brief overview of each of their members. So let's get started out with Westside Gun. Westside Gun was born Alvin Worth in Buffalo, New York in July of 1982. All of their members are born in Buffalo, just so y'all know, so I don't have to keep on repeating that though. Like, <laughs> But Westside Gun began a rap in the early 2000s and he actually re-released some of his works from 2003 to 2005 recording on streaming services with Flyest Dude and Charge Volume 1. His career would come to a screeching halt though after he went on the run for a weapons charge where he pled guilty and was sent to federal prison in 2006. Fun fact, when he was locked up in prison, he actually became friends with Sly Green, who was a very notorious drug kingpin in Buffalo. After getting out of prison though, Westside tried to manage his brother Conway's rap career. But when Conway was shot in 2012, Westside stepped up to the bat and released his controversially titled series of mixtapes, Hitler Wears Hernies, in October of 2012. Regarding the mixtape series, Westside has said, the whole Hitler Wears Hermes, you know the title, I wanted to come up with some of the grimiest but flyest stuff I could come up with, cause like, that's basically my whole style, just the grimiest, flyest stuff I could think of. Everybody was already used to that Devil Wears Prada, and I'm just like, you know what? I want to flip that right there. Like, that was something. I just wanted to come up with something that, soon as you hear it, you'd be like, yo, that ish is crazy, but fly at the same time. 
So that's how I really came up with it. Now to Conway the Machine, who is Westside Gun's half-brother and has went through many different rap names such as Cannon, Killer Angel, Jimmy Conway, etc. Just like his brother, he had been rapping, but his life would drastically change in 2012 when he was shot in the back of the head, neck, and shoulder. This shooting left Conway with half of his face paralyzed and him having Bell's palsy, which is a condition that causes a weakness or paralysis in the muscles of the face. This is the same thing that famous WWE and AEW wrestling announcer Jim Ross has, but more on wrestling later. Most people would think that your rap career will be over since now. How are you going to rap with essentially half of your face? But Conway muscled through it and had to reinvent his style to slow it down and get dirtier beats to go with how spooky his voice now sounded. In his words, most people look at it as a disability, but he looks at it as a blessing because he could easily be dead right now. Because, I mean, for God's sake, he got shot in the head. Now, to Benny the Butcher, who is the younger cousin of Conway and West Side Gun. Growing up, he would try to rap with Westside and them, but they wouldn't let him, and he had to go tell on them to be included. He was four or five at the time, but throughout the years, his rap career would start and stop with him doing occasional prison bids, including a two-year stint that he did between 2011 and 2013. Benny got out of prison and really wanted to focus on rap. Also, I would like to plug in Derringer, who is behind the fire beats Griselda be rapping on. Derringer is mad fire, and I also got to plug in Beat Butcher 2 while I'm at it. Now, the first release under Griselda, according to West Side Gun, was the Holland Nash tape with him and Conway, which was released in late 2015. Sometime after West Side Gun's debut studio album Fly God, which released in March of 2016, he asked Benny the Butcher if he wanted to join the group with him and Conway. At this time, Benny was kind of doing his own thing and releasing his own mixtapes and music and things like that, but he felt like it was time when Westside asked him to join. Benny started to realize what Conway and Westside had been doing with their merch, vinyls, and all that stuff selling out in a matter of seconds when they was releasing it. He really saw the buzz the group was starting to get as they started to build their own fan base. In early 2017, Conway and Westside signed the Shady Records, which was founded by Eminem and his manager, Paul Rosenberg. Upon signing this deal, Conway and Westside became the first artist to sign a deal with major label distribution out of Buffalo. Like I said earlier, besides Rick James, the almighty Rick James RIP, there hasn't been much to come out of Buffalo. So basically, Griselda had to create their own movement, which is very similar to Freddie Gibbs, who I also have a video about, link in the description, <clears throat> where Freddie Gibbs came out of Gary, Indiana, and there really isn't a big music scene out there, and there really hasn't been one since Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5. A month after Conway and Westside signed, Benny the Butcher and his collective Black Soprano family signed a label deal with Entertainment One Music, aka E1. Through the months and years, all of them would put out various projects that they would frequently collaborate with each other on and were highly received, but I'll save my recommendations for later. In October of 2018, Benny dropped his debut studio album, Tana Talk 3, which was critically acclaimed and brought widespread attention to him. The group continued to build a buzz as well and people began to wonder, with all three of them now, when will they release their debut studio album? They all have been flooding the streets with their solo stuff, but the people wanted their debut album, and that they got in November of 2019 with WWCD, which stands for What Would Sheen Gun Do? Sheen Gun or Machine Gun Black is Benny the Butcher's brother and he was sadly killed in 2006. The group named the album in his honor because they believe if he was still alive today, he would be in the group with all of them. Also, I recently found out the story behind the album cover too. I always thought that the lady on the cover was just some random lady, but it's actually a homeless lady in Buffalo named Claire who was actually quite the local legend from what I see. Another fun fact about this album is that it literally has zero samples. Yes, zero samples, which I didn't know. My favorite tracks from this album are Moselle, Cruiserweight Coke, Dr. Birds, Scotty's, and Maystore. 
Also, might I add that in 2019, Griselda signed a management deal with Rock Nation, which was founded by Jay-Z. This was also the year that Jay-Z told Benny the Butcher to decline the double XL list, which he did, and was a pretty smart move, especially since I personally don't think Benny would have fit on that cover, especially. I mean, look at this cover. Do you really think that Benny would fit with them? Who are they going to put him in a cipher with? Like, who are they really going to do that with? He would wash literally everybody. Everybody. Even Corday, Especially Corday. Completely wash Corday. I like Corday, But Benny would literally wash everybody on that list rapping-wise. And he just would be the outlier style-wise from everybody else. And he's just doing fine without the double XL cosign. As the days went on, though, the group just seemed to get bigger and bigger, and even all their members as solo artists seemed to get bigger and better by the days. The album, to me, that made me really be like, all right, like, these dudes are, like, here, here, like, they're, like, for real here, is when Westside Gun released Pray for Paris in April 2020. With that Virgil Abloh design cover, I didn't know that the cover was, like, this famous painting called David with the Head of Goliath, but man, this album cover is just hard. Like, I know Virgil has made some crappy album covers. Like, I know, I know he has. But the project, just like the album cover, is just pure art. Like, literally, top to bottom, it's just like, wow, I can't even explain it. Y'all gotta go listen because, like, my words don't do it justice. My favorite tracks off of this album are George Bondo, 327, $500 Ounces, Versace, and Le Dejoliba, I don't, I don't know how it is, De, 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 I don't know, I don't, I don't know, I think it's like French or something. In September of 2020, Conway released his debut studio album, From King to a God, which had really positive reviews. My favorite tracks off of this album are Lemon, Doe and Damani, Juvenile Hell, Jesus Crisis, and Amina's Van, which is on the deluxe version of the album. Being the Butcher's second studio album, Burning the Proof, released in October of 2020, which was met with very favorable reviews. My favorite tracks from this album are Burden of Proof, One Way Flight, Trade It All, War Paint, and Legend. In November of 2020, Westside Gun went on to the Joe Budden podcast and announced that he had fulfilled his contractual obligations to Shady Records and had become an independent artist. He met his contractual obligations after he released his album, Who Made the Sun? He has said that him and Paul Rosenberg are on good terms, but Westside had his grievances with Shady Records when he was signed to them. He was disappointed with the way that Shady Records handled the promotion for his album and how Eminem didn't promote his project on social media. He also was disappointed when they failed to acknowledge that Griselda was nominated at the 2020 BET Awards earlier that year. Also, I would like to add that Bang the Butcher was shot in the leg in Houston, Texas around this time during an attempted robbery, just to add that to the timeline, just so no one says that I forgot. And honestly, that kind of leads us to where Griselda is at now. I know Westside has dabbled with the thought of retirement lately, but it doesn't seem like he really is just yet, though. Bring the Butcher is still riding high off of his last project's success and is still working on the Black Soprano family, and Conway is out here working on his respective stuff. I do know that Griselda is trying to venture out to film with their movie Conflicted, so make sure to go out and check that when it drops. Guys, besides the projects I mentioned, there are just so many projects from all three of them that I just can't name one video without it being super duper long. I mean, I already know that I might get people in the comments talking about that, but these dudes got so many projects. It's insane. But the projects that I recommend you to go check out from each of them is to go check out Hitler Wars Hermes 7, The Plugs I Met, and Lulu. Those are each of their projects that I recommend to be fair to them all. I will say that on a side note, I didn't really know how deep these dudes were in the wrestling and so I started to do my research. In their raps, they have countless wrestling bars and even songs named after wrestlers or a variation of their names. Westside Gun might be the biggest wrestling fan out of all three of them, especially with him co-owning a part of a wrestling federation called House of Glory Wrestling. You want to know who also has some ownership in House of Glory Wrestling? Master P. That's actually pretty dope, especially since Westside Gun not that long ago 
dropped a song titled The Hurt Business with Smoke Dizzy and Wale, which is named after the WWE group, and I actually like that song. I'm also a bit of a low-key wrestling fan myself, so hearing some of these bars and references these dudes be saying just be giving me a little bit of nostalgia. And their whole style of me is just crazy. It reminds me a lot of that early Wu-Tang with the dirty samples and eerie beats. But to me, what I like is that the beats have little to no drums in it, with the sample pretty much being the instrumental. That's truly art to me, and to flow on that is just crazy. I mean, they as a group and solo artists are surrounded by some of the best producers of all time like Madlib and the Alchemist. We also can't forget about Derringer, Beat Butcher, Conductor Williams, Static Selector, and so many more. All in all, what do you guys think of Gazoda? What's your favorite song by them? Who was your favorite member and why? you all got to let me know in the comment section below. You guys got to let me know if you want a separate video for each of the members too. Also, as always, I love you guys. Peace out. We out.